Yo, what's up guys? We are back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your future house drop sounds more powerful. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your track from this. To this. To make a powerful future house drop, we have to follow some steps. So I have created my own 5 steps which I follow every time while making a future house drop. First step is to make a good melody and a bass line. In future I will make a detailed video about how you can make some good melodies and chord progression or bass line. But for now we are not going on there right now. So after having a good melody and bass line, for this project our melody and bass line is this. So now we have our lead and the melody. So the step 2 to make a cool future house drop or you can say powerful future house drop is to have a good sound selection of your lead and bass and the chord. My general approach for layering is to pick a particular sound which will hold the main character of my final lead. I have in my mind that I have to make a drop like Brooks or like Bad Reputation. So there is one layer which will stand out from the rest of the sounds which I use for layering because the rest of the sounds should not be the main lead but they act as a supporting lead. So in this case I use 10 layers. 5 or 6 lead will do the job because there is no need of layering 15 sounds or 10 sounds so like but in this case I use 10 presets. So this is my main lead. Now the second layer sounds like this. So our third layer sounds like this. Fourth layer sounds like this. So our lead with the 4 sounds sound like this. All together they sound like this. As a whole they sound like a one main lead. This is my approach for sound selection. And now for the bass. So this is our first reset for the bass. So now we have to layer it with some more sounds to make it complete in the frequency spectrum or layer it more to have more character. So I added these layers. All together they sound like this. So this is our mid bass and for the sub, sub is only one sound. Generally we use one powerful sub layer because for the powerful drop, sub bass is also play a very important role. So we have to choose a nice sub bass. So our bass sounds like this. Same with the chord, this is the first layer. Now we have to layer with some more sounds. All together they sound like this. So now the sound selection part is complete. Now we have step 3, processing and effects. Processing and effects is an important thing. Without any processing our lead sounds like this. But with the effect it sounds like this. For this lead, I have kept it very simple. So first we'll start with the EQ. It simply cuts the low end frequencies because we don't need the lower. So we don't need the low end frequencies. And second, I added distortion. And then I added this Lux Reverb. It is doing reverb automations. I added OTT. So adding reverb before the OTT makes the reverb more huge. After OTT, I added EQ just to cut some low frequencies. And this time it's about 158 hertz, I think, because we have some main information around that region too. Like so, after EQ, I added this saturation. I added sauces factor. So now EQ because we added saturation and sauces factor, which also bring back the sub frequencies. So we have to remove them leads without effect leads with effect 
Let's talk about the mid bass. So the first processing effect is distortion from KHS, I think, saturated preset. Then I added OTT and an EQ. So I have removed the sub frequencies from the bass because we have a separate channel for that. And also I reduced a little bit of high frequencies. Then after EQ, I added some sausage fattener. And again, an EQ to shape the sound. So after already, I added saturation, then soothe, then again EQ to shape the sound. So our bass without effects sound like this. With effects. For the chord processing, I added an EQ and then some distortion, OTT, then again EQ to shape the sound. Then I added some saturation, then again EQ to shape the sound and a fruity stereo shaper to make it more wide. So our chords without effects sound like this. With effects sound like this. Step 4. Small details. Like pitch bends, reverb automation, effects like tape stop or flanger, one shot of the lead. Like in this project, for the lead, I have added a reverb automation, some pitch bends and flanger effects and some reverse one shot. So first I added reverb automation to sound like this. Then I added a pitch bend. Then a flanger effect. And I also added this reverb one shot. So if you want to know how you can make this type of reverb one shot, so you just have to take a one note which you want to like make a reverse one shot. So you have to add a reverb on your master channel. So now we have to record it. Like so now we'll open the edition, we'll set it to the now and we we'll hit the record option and we just record that note. Delete some portions, then drag and drop it to your playlist. Click on the reverse and just simply put it. And then create automation clip, volume automation clip for the flickering effect. And now we have this. So our lead with all the effects sound like this. To make your bass sound more unique, you should add some growls, stabs to have some different character on specific notes. These are the growls. On their own, they sound like a sh**, but with bass, they make sense. And I also added some stabs like this. All together, they sound like this. So this is the last step to make your drop sound more professional is to have a good drum patterns with small details and effects. Like in this case, this is the very basic drum pattern. This is a very simple drum pattern. But to make the drop more professional, we have to add some toms, drum fills which make them more like groovy or professional. And also don't forget to add some downlifter and crashes like this. So this is all the steps to make your future house drop sound more professional. I hope I've helped some of you and you have learned something new I think. So if I miss something and you want to ask something more, write down in the comment section. So by the way this track is my new remix of Nanashi Mumi. Mumi ma ma ma. You can check it out, it's available on SoundCloud and my YouTube. Promotion. Let's check out the final result.